On October 22nd, a huge allegation was made by Matt Ford of The Good Trouble Show. He asserted that when Arrow was formed by Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, he assembled a separate super secret council of advisors off the records and hidden from Congress. According to Ford, this council of advisors is separate from the one that was officially announced on July 20, 2022 on the defense.gov website. Here's a citation from that news release. The Aero Executive Council, Aero Exec, led by Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security, USDINS, Ronald Moultrie, will, will provide oversight and direction to the Aero along these primary lines of effort. One, surveillance collection and reporting. Two, system capabilities and design. Three, intelligence operations and analysis. Four, medication and defeat. Five, governance. Six, science and technology. What Matt Ford is referencing is entirely different. As Aero Exec was officially announced and Congress knew who sat on that council. Regarding this alleged super secret council of advisors, Matt Ford stated. A few people on Capitol Hill recently got wind of this and asked Kirkpatrick for the names of who was sitting on this secret council. Kirkpatrick refused to tell them. Why? I'll tell you why. Because some of these unelected officials who sit on this super secret advisory council are the actual gatekeepers of the legacy UAP crash recovery and back engineering program. This is obviously a bombshell indictment that requires further verification to ascertain its validity or lack thereof. And one I'll be paying close attention to. Matt Ford goes on to say that members of Congress now have the list of names that are sitting on Kirkpatrick's secret council. So let's dive into some further insights harnessing Twitter. Rogue UAPTF, who I perceive is very plugged in, wrote, Matt breaks major news here at 18 minutes in. I can vouch for the accuracy of this information, and it demands immediate attention from oversight Dems at GOP Oversight. There is a secret committee which directs DOD arrows, actions, and public statements. This committee comprises unelected officials who are directly involved with the legacy UAP UFO crash retrieval and reverse engineering programs. This covert committee runs the dog and pony show that is Arrow. The names of these individuals have been provided to members of Congress with the appropriate clearances. <clears throat> it is now up to our elected representatives to haul these individuals before Congress and the American people to demand an explanation. Do not let your foot off the gas. Now is the time to demand answers and action. Now, journalist Tim McMillan um, on Twitter, he expressed some doubt that such a super secret council exists. He, he just assumed that what Matt Ford was referencing was the public arrow exec that we've already went over. And here's one portion where, uh, Tim McMillan is conveying that I'm going off the top of my head and would need to read the legislation. So the SAG, and SAG is colloquial for Sean's senior advisory group. And Aero Exit could indeed be different, but Kirkpatrick discussed the SAG in his testimony. Rogue UAPTF responds, there is the official office, Aero Exec, formerly AOIM Exec from fiscal year 23 legislation, and then there is an informal group made up of legacy program individuals. The latter is Sean's informal SAG. When Sean has been asked by members of Congress to provide the names of these individuals, he has refused to do so. Hence the reason these names have been disclosed to Congress by another secure means. Now, kind of in line with this discussion we're having right now, UAP News um, mentioned something relevant to Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the current director of Aero. He wrote, he wrote, just a reminder that at Brandon Fugel met with Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, Hal Putoff, Brandon McKinnon, in a secret meeting in Washington. In that meeting, Kirkpatrick allegedly told Brandon 
Fugel, that they are very aware that the UFO phenomenon is real. Listen to this clip. I'm not going to play the clip, and it's from an episode of The Basement Office. But what I will do is read a transcript of that portion. So Stephen Greenstreet explains as the narrator that in 2018, Brandon Fugel said a staffer in the Senate Armed Services Committee called him and asked if he'd come to Washington, D.C. to brief committee members on Skinwalker Ranch. Someone on behalf of Senator McCain's office called him to be clear. Now, some direct direct quotes from the presentation basement office episode. Brandon Fugel. Here's the interesting thing. As we commenced the presentation, I was interrupted by a gentleman at the head of the table, and he said, wait, before we proceed any further, I want to establish an understanding. All the gentlemen here, Mr. Fugel, that you're presenting to are all very well aware of the reality of the UFO phenomenon. So please dispense with any part of your presentation that would seek to convince us of the reality because we already know. Stephen Grease Street, who said that? Brandon Fugel, one of the individuals leading the discussion, Stephen Green Street, a source familiar with this briefing told me that this was Sean Kirkpatrick. In the event that this is not sufficient verification for you because Brandon Fugel within that segment of the basement office did not himself say that Kirkpatrick stated this, I have a tweet interaction right under the initial tweet I showed you regarding this segment of the basement office where Brandon Fugel chimes in. Thank you for posting this. Respectfully, I'd love to hear Brandon Fugel say that himself. I just can't trust a syllable out of Green Street's mouth. Do we know if Brandon ever corroborated that? Brandon Fugel, yes. It was clearly acknowledged that UFO, UAP, were real. So you may be thinking what I was thinking for a while, which is, what is the big deal if these three gentlemen acknowledge that UFOs are real? And, and these three gentlemen comprise of Hal Putoff, Sean Kirkpatrick, and Brennan McKernan, who was, a, who was at one point the director of the UFO task force and is or was a naval intelligence officer. Because even, even the most staunch skeptic will say UFOs are real. They're just, all UFOs comprise of are objects that are unidentified. But that doesn't mean that they're anomalous or deeply mysterious. And that's, and then I was going down that track too. But then I recognize that the context doesn't promote or, or, or lead to that analysis, in my opinion. Because Brandon Fugel was requested to, to give a briefing on what he's learned as the owner of Skinwalker Ranch as it regards to UAP. Skinwalker Ranch is, is, a, is known to be a UFO hotspot. So I really doubt that if this story is true, and I, and I assess that it is, when they, and in particular Sean Kirkpatrick, made it clear they already know UFOs are real, it was within the context of a deep and profound scientific mystery. Why would you, why would you say that to, to the owner of Skinwalker Ranch who obviously believes UFOs are a deep and profound mystery? Oh, we already know UFOs are real if they were actually just referencing stuff that's unidentified that could be anything. To me, the implication is contextually because of who they were asking to get briefed by that, that they were acknowledging that the, the profundity of the mystery. That's my interpretation at least. And I recollect, and I don't have the tweets offhand, I, I think it might have been tweets or it might have been something else, but I recollect that Brandon Fugel once mentioned this meeting that he had and these three gentlemen wanted him to tell them everything he's he's gathered about UFOs based on his experience with Skinwalker Ranch but they would not reciprocate 
Brandon Fugel asked them, okay, can you tell us what you know about UFOs? And they were not willing to divulge. So that's interesting too, if, if, if my memory serves. But the point is that if the allegation that Matt Ford has made on his show is accurate... And I recollect that Matt Ford said that there's at least two people on that secret advisory board for Sean Kirkpatrick that are that are involved with the crash retrieval program and are, are gatekeepers. If that's true, then yes, you have to wonder what Sean Kirkpatrick's true interpretation of this mystery is. Because in um, one of the previous hearings... He said that um, there's no scientific evidence establishing that UFOs are stemming from non-human intelligence, something like that. But if he's in contact with people that are directly involved in, in the uh, crash retrieval program, well, maybe he's not being uh, uh, forthright on that. But that's about as much as I'll say about that. Um, it's an it's a very interesting allegation. As I said earlier, I don't know if it's accurate, but I'm sure if there is truth to it, we'll get more clarity on that as time goes on. So to get close to wrapping up this video, there are two quotes I want to share with you and a tweet of mine that I'd like to discuss. Um, but the first, the two quotes that I'm going to share with you are based on the proposition that future whistleblowers will come forward. I'm more convinced than ever. I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent, but I'm because I I want to I want to be I want to be open minded and not and not and not be too certain of anything. But all the indications are pointing to um, more very high level whistleblowers coming forward. I'm hearing it from so many different sources. You could say, well, they all have the same root source. Mm, I think it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. For example, um, my understanding is that, you know, James, James Fox recently said that he's involved with um, some of the things he said is going to happen re regarding whistleblowers coming forward. And, and he, he's, we also know that he's been um, involved in working on his next documentary, which is about filming uh, insiders talking about where all this recovered material is and who has the authority to, to bring it out to the public. So when I'm putting two to two together, I think that he's probably already filmed whistleblowers that have gone on the record and their, their credentials have been checked. So, so I think a lot of, of, of groundbreaking stuff is, is, is going to happen. And David Grush is only the beginning. But let's, let's dig right into a quote I want to share. This is from Yes Theory's documentary that was published three weeks ago. Um, it was titled, Seven Days with the Man Claiming Aliens Exist. I think they just added this to the title, David Grush Under Oath. I've, I've, I've covered this quote before, but let's do it again. And after this quote, I'm going to share a recent George Knapp quote, which is I've never covered before and I just came across it. But in that Yes Theory documentary, the questioner asked, what does the future look like? I mean, it seems like all we can do is research right now. David Grush responded, yeah, what is happening next is I know there's some intel officers and other people in and out of government that are about to file complaints similar to what I did because they said, fuck it, you know? And then they were on these programs, like firsthand dudes, you know, not people telling me stuff like literally the dudes touching this stuff. He's referencing UAP. February of 2024, we should have a presidential panel on UAP disclosure, looking at the crash retrieval issue and everything. And then within 300 days of the enactment of the act, we're going to get some kind of, I think, government statement next year on this topic. The tsunami, the tsunami wave is building, and I don't think we're going to totally backpedal anymore. Other than that, it would be totally speculation, but that's at least what's going to come, I think, in 2024 is going to, it's going to come, I think in 2024, it's going to be knock on wood, potentially wild in a good way. So yeah. And here's a quote that I spoke of earlier by George Knapp 
It was transcribed by Joe Mergia. If we could get to the bottom of it, it changes everything. The Napster, George Knapp. I've been pretty far. I've been pretty far up the food chain. I don't know anyone who knows the big picture. I know there are people behind the scenes who know a lot more than we do, a lot more than I do, a lot more than OSAP learned. I've heard about these people for a long time, and somebody pulls these strings. I don't know that there was ever an MJ12, but I suspect that there was an organization like that. I'd love to have the answers while I'm still alive and kicking here, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. If we could get to the bottom of it, it changes everything. There are more whistleblowers, and there will be more that will come out. We know some of them. There are some big shoes still to drop. From the News Nation special on George Knapp Part 2. I'll close out this video with a Twitter essay that I wrote explaining where I'm coming from philosophically when it comes to the purported whistleblowers that are going to come forward. As new credentialed UFO whistleblowers step forward, some will 100% believe they are revealing the existence of non-human intelligence. Others will remain convinced they're succumbing to a mind virus that began around December 16th, 2017, or are part of a PSYOP. I reject both these rigid views. If these whistleblowers hold credible credentials and some provide first-hand accounts, their testimonies bolster the case for a UFO cover-up. Them coming forward shouldn't occur if there is no there there, making the mind virus explanation lose steam. While I assess there's a UFO cover-up, I'm cautious of the absolute certainty some hold on both sides of the debate. Nevertheless, we should all welcome new whistleblowers, as their insights will provide a better opportunity for us to unearth the truth and place increased pressure on the U.S. government to be transparent. Game on. So I think that says it all. I'm prepared to be wrong about UAP, but if I was forced to make a bet, I would absolutely bet that there is a UFO cover-up and that there is a UFO crash retrieval program and that non-human um, materials have been recovered and studied. But we don't have smoking gun evidence of this yet, so I'm prepared to be wrong. But I bet I'm right if I had to bet. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You can become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All those potentialities can be accessed in the description below. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I think there's going to be more videos this month. I'm feeling pretty good. And I will see you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.